Hey guys, I wanted to go over how sessions work in a web server and I'm going to be going over one way that's very common and that works really well, but there's other ways to do it as well. So if you're not aware, sessions is just like a piece of data that a server keeps track of, uh, of a user as they're using the website. And this can be very helpful because you want to keep track of what the user has done before and what they've done on your website so far. So it's a way of keeping track of what they've done. And this is how it works. So let's say you're on a website and you make a request. Uh, this might be the first request you make or maybe you've just logged in. It's gonna go to the server and then the server is gonna create a session. And so when I say they're creating a session, what that means is they're gonna be creating an ID and storing this in maybe a Redis or a database or just in memory. And what I mean just in memory, that might be just like a object where they're storing a whole bunch of sessions or a long array, something like that. Um, that's just in the uh, memory of the server as opposed to like a database or Redis. So for example, I have a little piece of sample data here. This might be like what looks a session might look like some data. So this thing up here is the session ID, SID. And uh, so to create a session ID, what you would do is generate a SID like this. So session ID is just a random string. Could be a UUID, which is probably recommended. Um, and if you don't know what that is, that's just a good way of uh, creating an ID because it's a random string uh, with some specific attributes of how it's made. But yeah, so it creates an ID and at first you don't have any data whatsoever in your session. Now they're making the first request, you might be able to store something uh, from it, but most of the time what you're gonna do is you're gonna send that ID back to the website. And the website is gonna store that ID in some way. Maybe they're gonna store it in cookies, local storage, session storage, pretty much it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but they're storing it in some place where it's persisted. And what I mean by that is when the user refreshes the page or leaves the site and comes back, they have that, uh, that ID still associated with them. And then every time the user makes a request, the server will look and see whether this ID is stored in whatever they're using to store it. And so what this allows you to do is when the user is making requests and doing stuff on your website is to gradually add data. So the session is just a basically JSON object. Um, there's other ways to do it, but like this where you just have the session ID and then any other data you wanna keep track of. So as the user is browsing the site and making requests, you slowly generate more data or you can generate more data. And you can also generate uh, for example, an expiration date. So maybe after seven days or five days, uh, there it's expired and this they get a new session and the data gets old or whatever. So some use cases for this are keeping track of whether the user is logged in or not. So right here I have the user ID. So I know who the user is uh, after they log in and I can store that as the user ID. And I might want to store also some metadata, so whether they're an admin. But you can also use this for pretty much any kind of tracking you want to do. So one thing you might want to do is make sure no one's spamming your login and trying to hack in and brute force the login. Um, so you might want to keep track of how many times this particular user has tried to log in. Um, now you may want to also do that, for example, by checking the IP address, but also this is another way um, you can maybe bring up a CAPTCHA um, to slow them down after they've tried to log in a couple times. So you just know basically it's a way of keeping state of the user on the server. So all this data is stored in the server, right? Or at least in Redis or the database, whatever you choose. All you send, all the website has is this ID. And this ID is meaningless, at least in this way this setup of sessions. Um, if you've heard of JWT tokens, that's where you actually store some of this data and the token itself 
and the website can decode this and see it. But in this case, the website has no idea what data you have or that you're holding in the back end. All they see is this ID which is meaningless to them. So all this other stuff is stored here. So that's nice. So the user has no way of seeing it whatsoever. So you can store all kinds of stuff. It can be sensitive data, anything you want. And uh, it can be very helpful. So yeah, that's how sessions work. They're super handy. I'm gonna be doing more videos about them and getting in depth of how to actually do this with Node.js and GraphQL very soon. So stay tuned.